let's say that f of x is equal to 2x plus 5 and g of x let's say g of x is x squared minus 4. Perform the indicated operations. So what is f plus g? What's the sum of the two functions? All you got to do is add them. 2x plus 5 plus x squared minus 4 and combine like terms. So all we can combine is 5 and negative 4 which adds up to 1 so it's x squared plus 2x plus 1. And so that's the sum of f and g. Now what about f minus g? f is 2x plus 5, and then it's going to be minus x squared minus 4. So this is going to be negative x squared plus 2x, and then we have 5 minus negative 4. 5 minus negative 4 is like 5 plus 4, which is 9. So that's equal to f minus g. Now what about f times g? This is just going to be 2x plus 5 times x squared minus 4. And we can go ahead and FOIL it. 2x times x squared, that's 2x cubed. And then 2x times negative 4, that's negative 8x. And then we have 5 times x squared, that's 5x squared. And then 5 times negative 4, it's negative 20. So in standard form, it's 2x cubed plus 5x squared minus 8x minus 20. Now, what is the domain of the three functions that we found? Let's start with f plus g. What is the domain for that? Whenever you have a polynomial, be it a binomial, trinomial, or many terms, where you don't have any fractions, no radicals, or logarithmic functions, the domain will be all row numbers. There's no restrictions on the value of x in this expression. x could be anything. So for these three functions, f plus g, f minus g, and f times g, we don't have any fractions or radicals, so the domain is all row numbers. It's negative infinity to infinity. Now what about f divided by g? What's the domain for this? f divided by g is simply 2x plus 5 divided by x squared minus 4. Now that we have a fraction, the domain is restricted, it is not all real numbers. To find the domain, you want to find the x values that do not exist, the values that x cannot be. To do that, set the denominator equal to 0. x squared minus 4 cannot be 0. If it is, we're going to get a vertical asymptote which means it's undefined at that point. Now we can factor x squared minus 4. It's x plus 2 times x minus 2. So therefore, x cannot equal negative 2, and it can't equal 2. These are the vertical asymptotes. But they're also infinite discontinuities. There's no, we can't plug in negative 2 for x. The function will be undefined. Anytime you have a 0 on the bottom, it's undefined. So how can we write the domain using interval notation if x cannot equal negative 2 or 2? It's going to be from negative infinity to negative 2, union negative 2 to 2, union 2 to infinity. So here's another example. Let's say if we have the function 1 over x minus 3. x minus 3, the denominator cannot be 0, so x cannot be 3. Therefore, the domain is everything except 3. That's how you'll write it. Let's say if we have this. x cannot equal 4, and it can't equal negative 3. Just change the sign. If you set x minus 4 to 0, x, you'll get 4 for x. Now, to write the domain, it's going to be negative infinity to negative 3. Negative 3 comes before 4. Union, negative 3 to 4. Union, 4 to infinity. So that's the domain for this function. 
So let's say that f of x is equal to 4x plus 5 and g of x, let's say it's equal to 8 minus x squared. What is f of 2 plus g of 3? To find f of 2, we need to replace x with 2 in the equation 4x plus 5. So that's 4 times 2 plus 5, and that is a terrible looking 2. To find g of 3, we need to plug it into that equation. So it's plus 8 minus 3 squared. And then let's add 4 times 2 is 8, and 3 squared is 9. 8 plus 5 is 13, 8 minus 9 is negative 1, 13 minus 1 is 12. So that's the value of f of 2 plus g of 3. You just find the two values and uh, you add them. Let's try another example. So what is f of negative 2 multiplied by g of 2? So let's do it separately. Let's find f of negative 2 first using this formula. So it's going to be 4 times negative 2 plus 5 which is negative 8 plus 5, and so that's negative 3. Now let's calculate g of 2 using this equation. So that's 8 minus 2 squared. 2 squared is 4, 8 minus 4 is 4. So now that we have these two values, let's replace f of negative 2, which is negative 3, and let's replace g of 2 with 4. So negative 3 times 4 is negative 12. So that's the value of f of negative 2 times g of negative 2. I mean times g of positive 2. So all you got to do is simply find the values and then multiply them. 